All right. Hey, hey guys, how we doing? Sorry, we're having some problems with uh, OBS technical. All right. Hey, hey guys, how we doing? Sorry, we're having some problems with. Uh, All right, so Peter says you could see me and you can hear me. All right, great. All right, so we're trying something different. Uh, my OBS just minutes up, uh, just as I was starting, it stopped working, my camera crashed. So <laughs> technical difficulties. That's the beauty of doing this kind of stuff live. Uh, you hear echo, do you still hear echo? Peter. All right, Daniel says, Mikhail says you can, I see thumbs up, this is good. All right, Gerardo, how you doing? Okay, no echo, good, ice creams, all right, Mark. Thanks guys. Okay, cool. All right, you're all behind me. Thanks, Daniel. All right, sorry about that, guys. A little uh, technical difficulty. That's the beauty of doing these things live. Uh, nice to be here. I'm here with Brad. Uh, Brad's uh, had the suggestion to try it through Zoom, and he's streaming, so hopefully we could uh, carry on now. All right, great. So uh, what I've done in the past, I've done some milling, uh, some uh, live streams, and what we're going to do here today I figured it'd be good to do a little bit of turning and then show some milling strategies. Uh, and then also I'm gonna do it in metric. I know a lot of folks, uh, we, we're always doing things here because we're in the States. We do things in inch or imperial units and um, I'm comfortable in both metric and inch and I thought I would do it in metric for you guys today. All right. Okay, so I see I'm just looking briefly at the comments before I get started. Hey, Mike, Al, Amphori Consulting, Daniel, Ice Creams, all the usuals. Uh, is Ron on? Ron. Okay, so I figured I would just do this simple part here. Uh, nothing too complicated. Uh, do a profile and uh, do a revolve and put these flats in here. Okay, so what we'll do, we will just start with the fresh new design. Let me close the data panel so that we have some extra real estate on our screen. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna draw uh, like the cross section profile of this part. So what I mean is uh, if I come into here under design, and if I look at this very first uh, sketch, and you can see how I did it. So I just drew this uh, profile here and I, I made it by diameter as well. So I could drag these numbers here. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna create this shape and then uh, revolve it. And that's this command right here. Okay, so we'll come to our brand new design. We'll Select a sketch. I'm gonna pick a plane. Doesn't really matter what plane I use. I'm just gonna start sketching a line. So I've got this icon here. I also have it here. And then that letter L is the hotkey L for line. So once you get familiar with Fusion, you get uh, used to some of the hotkeys. And uh, so it, it makes your life a whole lot easier. All right, great. So now I'm just going to start drawing that shape. And it doesn't matter what order I do it, I can come back and make changes. And these over here, I purposely uh, made them off, uh, not horizontal or vertical, because I've got the constraints I can use. So I've got this here, horizontal, vertical. So I can say I want that horizontal and I want that vertical. And then another thing in Fusion, when things are blue, when the lines are blue like this, uh, you can drag them around. It's not yet constrained. So I've got this origin point in here. I like to anchor my geometry that I've drawn to that. So a couple ways I can do it. One way I can click on this line and say I want that coincident with this. 
origin. So now that line is black. So now I, I'm clicking on it, dragging it left and right, but it's not moving, but I can grab it this way. So now I'm gonna start assigning some dimensions. So if I'm looking uh, how I made the part before, this center bore was um, 15 millimeters diameter. And so one way I could do it is click on that and then this line here and um, tell it it's 7.5 millimeters. That's one way, but I don't wanna do it that way. What I wanna show today is how I can use the diameter command. And let me double check that my units are in metric, yes. So if I, if I want to use the diameter command when I'm dimensioning, I need a horizontal line here. So I'm going to create another line, L for line. I'm going to put that just across there to show my center point. Now I can leave it uh, a solid line or I can make it construction geometry. And then uh, the hot key for that is the letter X, like X, Y, Z. And now I've got that construction geometry. So now let's hit a dimension on there and we're going to do sketch dimension and that's already pre-selected because I was already there but now I'm going to click this and when I go to place it I can right click my mouse and I have this right here diameter dimension and now it's showing a diameter and it because I already had it at 7.5 millimeters radius it already knows my diameter there is 15. Now, if I look at my, how I designed, uh, how I dimensioned the previous part, I want this now from here to here. And I want to right click again. And that diameter, and you see this, what it's doing here? So that is uh, 30 millimeters. 30 millimeters. And I've done this, I've done this before, and I'm wondering what the heck happened. So I accidentally clicked on that point. So you got to make sure that you get that line instead, the horizontal line and not the point. So if I hit D for dimension, I grab this line and I go to here. I right mouse click and I hit a diameter there. Now the dimension is showing proper. And that value, I want 30 millimeters. And I'm going to drag these a little more to be a little more representative of what I'm doing. And then that this, I want to dimension that from here to here. And again, how do I do that? I right mouse click and do diameter. And I'm getting that again. So let me hit escape. Let's do dimension from this point to there. And then now right mouse click diameter. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting that center point and then going outward. And I want that value to be 45 millimeters, 45. Okay. And then the, this, this uh, shoulder here, the OD of the part, the outside diameter, I want that to be 60 millimeters. So again, I'm going to dimension from this line, I'm going to pre-select it, I'm going to hit escape. So I'm going to hit D for dimension from here to there. And I'm going to right click again. Diameter of that is going to be 60 millimeters. OK, so now I've got the diameter of the part constrained. Now I need to give it some dimensions, you know, the length of this line, the length of that line, and the length of that line. I could dimension the whole part, or I can just dimension each segment. So I want that segment there to be 10 millimeters and I want this segment here to be 15 millimeters and let me drag this guy out just so it, when I dimension this one it's in going the right direction instead of going the wrong way so here I'm going to hit D for dimension and I know that Brad covers all this stuff really well and um you guys know how to do this, but I just want to show some of the some of the workflows that I use. So I can clean this up here a little bit, drag these uh, dimensions, clean up my drawing a bit, clean up my dimensions just because I can. All right, so there's my general shape. Let me take a quick look at the chat.
is there anything in there that I need to be aware of? Uh, Fusion attempting using, okay, Peter says, was it using the point to save the line? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So if I was grabbing that point on accident, uh, this diameter doesn't give me what I wanted, so. Okay, so that looks good there. So I'm gonna finish my sketch. And then now what I wanna do, I wanna revolve that about this center line here, and I wanna take and revolve that to make it a cylindrical part. So I'm gonna select revolve here. And Fusion already picked my profile, so. That's that profile there. And then now what axis do I wanna revolve about? So I wanna revolve it around this axis. So there's my cylindrical part. And very simple round part there with a couple of steps there. Okay, so next I wanted to do, you remember on this part that I showed you, I've got these flats here that represent the, the hex. And there's a few ways to do that. One way is I can come into here uh, sorry, uh, create a sketch, sorry, and okay, my mouse is now, today is just one of those days, technical difficulty day, all right, so let me, sorry guys, huh, strange, <laughs> okay, so I said there's a few ways to do the hex, so one way I can come into here and I can do a polygon and assign how many sides I want. Uh, what I'm gonna do today, I'm just gonna create a line. I'm gonna show you one way to do that. I'm just gonna sketch a line horizontally from here to there. And let me, let me go back because I realized that I made the sketch on the wrong, uh, on the wrong face. So a few, few things I can do, I can redefine the sketch plane by right clicking here and redefine the sketch plane. And I can say, I want that sketch on, on this face instead of I had it on that face right there. Okay, so now I've got the sketch there. Now I'm gonna generate that flat. So I can click on this area to highlight that and preview, uh, show me a preview of what I wanna extrude. And I wanna extrude that down into the part. So I'm gonna hit the letter E for extrude, or I've also got this command right here. And then what I can do now, I can drag this, this in, and I want that to be uh, minus 10 millimeters. Okay, so now I've got that flat right there. So you guys are probably wondering, well, how am I gonna do the other one? So there's a few ways to do that. I'm gonna do a circular pattern and that you can find here under pattern, circular pattern. And then you can pattern a few ways. You can pattern the face. So I can say I wanna pattern those two faces around what axis, the center, and then how many instances, four times, five times, six times. So there I've got my hex. So that's one way, there's more than one way to do that. Uh, Brad's probably looking at it and thinking, hey, Angelo, I would have done it this way, or all you guys out there as well. Uh, let me take a, take a look at the chat, see if there's anything in there. It's really, really good to be, uh, be back here uh, talking to you, all you regulars. I, I'm on the keyboards with uh, some of the other live streams. It's always great chatting with you, with you guys. So. All right. Cool. Yeah, I can hear you, Brad. Oh yeah, this is good, and it's actually good that you. This is good because now we can both talk, and you can share your camera too. So, oh, got it. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say we can show you show your new haircut. Just kidding, <laughs> I got my haircut. I hope you guys like like this style. Okay, so it's good, Brad, that you are you're able to chat and users can hear you. So yeah, this is a good way to do stuff. All right. Al says that's cool, Brad. We enjoy your live streams very much, but we do want more cam, indeed, especially beginner level cam. All right, great. This is this is going to be it for you, uh, Al. I hope I pronounced your name right, Al. And uh, Daniel says another tip. I didn't know you could redefine the sketch plane. Oh yeah, yeah. So you just uh, uh, 
because I had actually picked this plane here and I wanted it actually on this on this face. So you can right click on the sketch and redefine the sketch plane and it'll move it to the, the new plane. So super handy um, in case you make a mistake, you can move things around. All right, great. So now we've got the basics of that and then we've got to have, we got to put some holes in here so we can do a bolt circle on this face. A couple ways to do it. Again, there's more than one way to do this and these are just kind of the way that I work. So I'm gonna create a new sketch here and I'm going to right click that and say, create a sketch. Uh, what I like to do just kind of the way my mind works is I'll do a line and I hit L for line. And then now as I move my mouse around and I learned this from Brad, if as you just move around, you you can get that snap, right? You see how it's snapping to that center. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna click that point there and that point there. And now I've got a line there on my on that face. So I want that to be construction geometry. And remember I said the letter X on your keyboard, or you can toggle it here. So it's kind of hard to tell, but it that is a dashed line. And that's construction geometry. And again, the way my mind works as a machinist, I'm going to put that point right there at the center. And you can see as I move my mouse, it's snapping. And when you get that triangle icon, that's the midpoint of a line. So now I've got a point right there. Okay, and that's all I need. Now, give it a second, and Fusion now comes back to the solid modeling tools. I wanna to create a hole, and that's, you can find here, or H for hole. And I'm just gonna click that point right there. And so now it gives me a preview. You can see that red area there. And I've got these options here in the whole dialog box. I can give it the length. But actually, I'm going to say to a face, you know, back here. Just take that hole to that back face. Now, what diameter do I want to make my hole? Five. Yeah, let's leave it. Let's leave it five. And I'm just ad-libbing here. I'm not following any, any uh, mechanical drawing or blueprint. I'm just kind of going through my workflow as how I would design something like this and then machine it. So if our hole is gonna be uh, five millimeters, we'll have a chamfer at the top and we'll say that chamfer is gonna be six millimeters. And I like that. I'm gonna hit okay. So there's my hole. Actually, as I'm looking at this, I'm realizing if I have a socket head cap screw, I may not have enough room there on that flat face. So let me right click and I'll edit that feature. And let's change it from five, well, let's go four millimeters. And let's make that chamfer five millimeters. Okay, so now we got a little bit more room there. So now, again, I could have used that done this hole and the flat and then use the same pattern, circular pattern to pattern them around the same. But the reason why I'm doing it in two separate circular patterns is we've got six faces for the hex and then maybe I only want four holes. So I'm gonna come here to circular pattern. And remember when we did the flat, we did, we pattern the face, but you can also pattern a feature and you can grab that feature from the timeline down below. And then what axis are you rotating about? I want to rotate around this inside diameter. I could pick that axis right there, that red line there. I'm just picking that. And then now how many holes? Let's say four holes. So now we've got four holes on our model. Very straightforward. Let me take a quick, quick peek. I just love this stuff working with you guys. It's super cool being here. All right. I don't see anything. I'm sure Brad's, Brad's doing a good job of answering questions. Uh, Brad, if I miss anything, don't hesitate to jump in, buddy, okay? All right, so now we've got the basics of this part. We could throw some chamfers on here. And I'm debating if I'm going to add the chamfers now or just let my cutting tool uh, do the chamfer. Uh, I'll leave that like that. Let me just put a... Let me put an outside chamfer here and here and there. And we'll just, what does half a millimeter look like? Yeah, that looks good. All right, cool. So there's our basic part. We can make changes down the road if I, even if I 
Uh, when I'm done machining it, I can add some features to it. Uh, I can add some fillets maybe in here, but I'm just gonna leave that for right now. Don't wanna run out of time at the uh, top of the hour. Uh, we had some technical difficulties in the middle. Okay, Ayal says, Angela, can you explain your comment about the cutting tool doing the chamfer? Okay, great. So as you can see here, uh, I created this chamfer here and I modeled that in by using the chamfer command here. Uh, in Fusion, there's ways where if you have a sharp edge, uh, like let's say for example, this sharp edge uh, where you can do a chamfer and let the cutting tool generate that chamfer for you. And I can do that with a turning strategy or with a milling strategy. So um, what I'll do is after I machine these flats in here, I'm gonna chamfer around this hex and I'm gonna allow the cutting tool to generate that. But because I've got the, uh, sorry, I said, I'll let the cutting tool generate that. I'm gonna let the milling cutting tool generate that as my milling tool uh, goes around and generates that, okay? And these chamfers here, this is gonna be gener generated by the turning tool, this one and this chamfer right, right there. Oops, I'm trying to grab that. I accidentally grabbed the edge. So those faces are gonna be done by the turning tool when the turning tool profiles around the outside, all right? Okay, so now I like that. I like where I'm at. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go here to the manufacturing workspace. And when I go to the manufacturing workspace, you can see that my icons change and I've got these tabs here. I've got milling, turning, additive, but the very first thing I need to do is define my setup. And in the setup is where I define uh, the stock, what my stock is gonna look like. Will it be square or round? Or will it be coming from a solid that I already modeled? Um, I also define where the zero is on my machine. Uh, so in, on the lathe example, it's obviously gonna be the center of the part. So let's do that. So we're gonna come up here to set up. We've got this folder here. You could also find it here under the drop down, and it says uh, here, new setup. I'm gonna click that. And as soon as I did that, I've got a couple of things happened on my screen. So Fusion assigned a rectangular stock, which is that yellow preview. And then it gave me that work coordinate system, which is the red, green, and blue arrows. And that corresponds to RGB, red, green, blue. So I'm not milling this part, I'm gonna be turning this part. So I'm, I'm skipping over this machine area right here. I'm not gonna talk about that right now. I'm just gonna jump right here to set up operation type. I'm turning or mill turn. So now when I click that, Fusion assumes it's gonna be a cylindrical stock and it automatically finds the center of that part for me. And it gives me uh, the, see that white dot right there where the origin is? So it's, Fusion automatically gave me that by default. But I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna flip that. So you can hit this checkbox here. The other thing you can do is if you click on the arrowhead, uh, that will sometimes flip for you, but because the way my settings are right here, I'm just gonna go right here and hit that uh, flip Z axis checkbox. So now as I'm looking at this here, kind of just analyzing and saying, okay, how do I want my stock to look like? It's kind of, those are the thoughts that are going through my head now as a machinist. And then you notice the view cube here in the top right-hand corner. Uh, Daniel, you want bar barley corn units? <laughs> uh, you guys are funny. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm looking, uh, oh, I know what I was just about to say. Uh, this WCS work coordinate system is, is how the part and the orientation is of the part in your machine, your CNC machine. It's separate from the view cube, how the part was designed in Fusion. So they're two separate things. Uh, so don't get confused with uh, how the orientation is in the view cube and the orientation of the WCS or work coordinate system is two separate things. Okay. Uh, what else do I need to do? Uh, a couple things we need to pay attention to here is the origin. You see here, I've got this drop down box. It says stock front. I can have the origin at the back of the stock. 
I can have the origin at the front of the model. So I can say I want my on my machine tool, the Z0 to be right here at the face of the part, uh, which helps because if you're at your CNC machine tool and uh, the tool is running and all your uh, coordinates will be relative to the front face of the part. And uh, if you if you're following your code, you can see what the next line is and you can look at your display and see where it's going and distance to go. Uh, I personally like coming off the face of the part. A couple other things we need to pay attention to here in the setup is the model body. This tells Fusion, what are you machining? So as I click that, you can see the blue preview of what Fusion selected here. Another thing I need to do and pay attention to, uh, probably, let me, let me do something here. I want to, so you can see here our top view that we're looking at it this way. And if you're looking at this outer profile of the shape, Fusion would hit that. But what if we have our X axis, you see this red line, how it's going up towards this uh, area? What if I want my X axis normal to that? So now the X axis is looking like that. So you can control the orientation uh, via the X axis here. Uh, I want to turn on spun profile. And what that will do in, in Fusion is like we've got those flats there. What we don't want to happen is Fusion to look at it as a cross section like that. And then when it does the turning that it hits these areas because then it will uh, turn basically and knock those flats off for us. So we want to make sure on a part like this where there's milling or flat features that you do turn on a uh, spun profile. And Chuck, that's just if you have a Chuck reference. I'm not gonna worry about that right now, keeping things super, super simple today. Now stock, we haven't even done anything on stock. And I keep glancing over at the chat to see if my name pops up there. Okay. So, yeah, for some reason my units, uh, came in inches. Um, I said I was going to do it in metric, and I will do it in metric. Let me uh, just address this really quick here. And uh, so my stock diameter, here, let me do this. Let me just hit OK. So that now when I, when I change this over here to metric, and I thought I had my default set to metric. Let me hit OK. Now, when I go to my stock, this is all going to be in metric now. And so that's why I exited that. So let's give it some, let's do this. We've got these options here. And because I selected a turning operation, uh, cylinder is what came up as a default. I'm going to do a relative size cylinder. And I can say, give me three millimeters of stock on the OD or outside diameter. And then on the front side, let's take off one millimeter of material there. And on the back, let's give ourselves, say, 25 millimeters just so we have something to grab onto. We can even increase that to, say, 35. And we can grab that right there with our chuck. Now I'm just going to hit OK. Obviously, our diameter, that's some round numbers there. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Post process. Here is where you can give it a program number. So I'll just give it one, two, three, four, and then a comment here, live stream. WCS offset. So by default, the zero value comes up. And what that will do, uh, based on the post processor that you have in your machine, it will uh, use default to the first available work offset. Uh, that's the same as if you're doing this number one here. And number one typically refers to G54. So like I said, if it was a zero, it would default to the first work offset, which is G54. I'm not going to worry about multiple WCS offsets. So I'm just going to hit OK now. So we spent a couple minutes talking about uh, the setup and how to define our stock and our orientation on the machine. I'll take a quick look.
at the chat just to see if there's anything in there. Brad's handling that. Thanks, Brad. Oh, Kieran, what's up, man? He's answering questions too. Cool. Awesome. That's my buddy as well. All right. Okay, so we got our part here. I like what I'm seeing. And we're just going to start dropping some tool paths on here now. A uh, couple of ways, or again, there's more than one way to, to process a part. Some people rough it and then face it. Some people, uh, because if you, if you uh, face it and you're wasting time, you know, machining from here to here to face it, that's just wasting time because you're going to come back here and rough it anyway. But to keep it straightforward, I'm just going to do a face. I'm going to pick a tool. And in Fusion, all of our tool, uh, these tabs here, all look the same, unless you're in five axis, then we have another uh, tab here. But most of the time, they all look the same like this with these five tabs here. And then drilling would only have four. Uh, first thing I need to do is select a cutting tool. And I'm gonna come down here to, I have a, a turning library here in my cloud post. And not cloud post, in my cloud tools. And let's pick a tool and I can filter uh, by type of tool. I can drag this out here. And you might notice that my tool library looks a little bit different than uh, previous uh, versions. That's because I have the uh, preview turned on. I'll show you after I select this tool, I'll show you how to select the, the, the new tool library. Okay, so let's take uh, this tool right here. It's shown me a preview of my tool here in the right hand side and the orientation of that tool there in that view. I get the question a lot. Uh, what am I looking at and think of a standard engine lathe or a standard lathe uh, manual lathe when you're standing in front of it. The tool is sitting down in front of you and you, you can look down on top of the tool and you can see that insert facing towards you. But then when you get to a CNC lathe. Uh, so here I'll use this. Do I have anything here? I'll use this pen. So let's say this is my cutting tool. And this is uh, the part in the lathe. And if you, your tool is going this way, this will be uh, your x, x negative is going towards center line, x positive is going away. And then z positive is going away from the part. Actually, I'm probably backwards here because of my camera, but in the way I'm sitting. So, and then uh, going towards this way in my part would be z minus. So, when you're on a CNC lathe, that insert is not right in front of you. That insert is rotated about Z, and now it's coming in from this direction. Still X minus going towards the center, and X positive going away. And then the Z didn't change. Z positive is going away from the part this way, and then in towards the chuck. Again, I'm backwards, so if I was, if the part was this way, but you guys kind of get the idea. Uh, a few times I get people saying, hey, I need to flip my tool around because it's upside down. Uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm going to pick that tool and I'm going to just say select. And Fusion already gave me a toolpath based on some default settings. Uh, let's take a look and see what some of these default settings are. So by default, it says machine at the front of the model. And you can assign an offset if you wanted to. Uh, radii, let's take a look at this. What the heck is going on here? <laughs> All right, there's a definite, uh, what the heck is that? <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> did I do something to my setup? Or am I good here? Let me take a look at my setup. That was some wonkiness there. Let me double check my Z, let's say. My Z is this cylinder. Yeah, it looks good. And then uh, X, I'm not even gonna worry about the orientation of X. I'll leave that as nothing. And I've got my spun profile on, okay. So let me regenerate this and see if we get, yeah, so that's better. I might, I might have selected something weird because uh, that, that was certainly, <laughs> Uh, not what I was expecting there. Yeah, that looks better there. I might have selected something weird. All right, we're all good here. Uh, passes here. You can give it multiple passes on the front. So I can say uh, step over. 
let's change that to half a millimeter. And on the finish pass, uh, let's go 0.25 millimeters. So now what it does, it, it knows where the front of the part is here. And it's going to take uh, half a millimeter, half a millimeter, and then that final 0.25 millimeters on the finish. So now let's go ahead and simulate that. A few ways to get to simulate, guys. You got this icon here, or you can right click and say simulate. I'm going to turn the stock on. And you can, uh, for your colorization, do material. And let's, oh yeah, and then also on the mode, I like tail so let's hit play there so now we're getting some toolpath uh, roughing that material and then finishing that front face another option we have here is we can do comparison and what comparison does the blue is remaining stock the green is a finished part so i'm gonna hit close so we've just faced the front of that part now what we need to do we need to let me do uh, look at this bottom view here. We need to remove all this material here. So I would come up here under turning, profile roughing. I'm going to use that same tool that I was just using. That's tool number five. Under the geometry, we've got some constraints here. And the geometry constraints constrain the cut from the uh, where you're going from front to back. And you can control where the tool, where it starts on the front and where it finishes on the back. And by default, when I'm doing the profile roughing, it says start machining from the front of the model and machine to the back of the model. I could give it an additional offset. So if I wanted to go beyond uh, the back of the part, what happens if I give it uh, something like a two millimeters? You'll see that brown line there. It went in the positive direction. So I need to give it a minus. So I want it to go minus direction. And what I like to do is I, I think uh, what my part off tool is when I cut the part off in the lathe. And I wanna make sure that this value is larger than that. So let's do something like minus four millimeters. We have some options here under tool limit. And if I hover my mouse over that, it gives me a preview. So I can say, take the tool to the tangent contact point or cutting edge limit. Cutting edge limit is good if you uh, don't want the tool to go beyond a certain boundary or like, for example, hit your chuck. Uh, so cutting edge limit is good for that. Uh, but the tangent contact point is if you want the point of tangency to go to that uh, uh, limit on the back. And that's what I want right here. I want contact point. Next on the radii tab, this is where you can constrain it uh, radially. Give me one second, let me drink some water. Talking, throat gets dry. While I'm doing that, I'll take a quick look at the chat. All right. Looks like Brad's answering the questions. <clears throat> yeah, I saw something about the tooltip pop-ups. So if you hover over, we get these uh, tooltips. If you hover over something, it gives you some good instructions. So it's very, very good. Uh, you don't really need to read a manual. You can just come in here and usually get your questions answered. All right, uh, next, radii tab. So we talked about the constraints front to the back. Now we're gonna talk about the constraints radially or on the radius of the part. So a couple of things to look at here. I generally start at the inner radius to where the tool is going to, and then the outer radius and the clearance is where it's starting from. So. Uh, do I want to, uh, so we, we're going to have a hole in that part and we're already faced, but I'm just going to leave it here because we're model aware. I'm going to leave it stock ID. Outer radius is stock OD. So you can see that light colored blue line. It's, it's above the part and that's because we had an, uh, the stock was larger by a certain amount. I think I had three millimeters on there. can't remember exactly. Uh, because yeah, it was 66 millimeter diameter and the part is 60, yeah, so three, mil three millimeters radially. And then we've got this one here. So generally what I like to do is, uh, instead of this saying stock OD, I like to say, refer to the outer radius. That means that this outer radius is looking at this. So whatever value this is, it's coming off of, 
this is going to be referenced by that outer radius. So here you can now give it an offset and you can do something like maybe three millimeters, something closer, because if you had something like 10 millimeters and your tool will be starting further out. Uh, no need for that in this case. I'll just say three millimeters. So what we've done now is we, we've constrained uh, front to back on the geometry tab and then radially. So Fusion is going to say, OK, with these constraints, what am I going to remove material wise on the passes tab? Passes is what where you um, control when the tool is in the cut. And then linking is when the tool is uh, approaching and exiting. So imagine the highway or the freeway, or I think in the UK it's called motorway, uh, the on-ramp and off-ramp. Uh, so that's what the linking does. But now we're talking about the passes. We've got some options here. You can do horizontal passes, or you can do vertical passes. We've also got back cutting. That's another strategy with this. You, you need a special tool to handle that or a neutral tool. I'm not going to worry about that right now. We're going to leave that at horizontal passes. And then here we've got an option. We can do front to back, back to front, or both ways. I want to start machining at the front of the part and finish at the back of the part. Uh, radial grooving, what is that? Uh, so here, as I'm hovering over, I get this tool tip. And that first image on the top left, it says, uh, don't allow grooving. So as a tool is traversing uh, or, uh, uh, across the part, it's not going to dive in radially, or uh, you have the option axially. So on some uh, CNC machines, that's considered type 2 roughing, where the tool can uh, does its move. It's called non-monotonous, and it, it, it can drop down instead of always going into Z minus, Z minus, and then X positive, X positive, X positive, it would allow an X minus move. So that's uh, what, what these control. So I'm just gonna, in this case, say don't allow grooving. Use can cycle, again, that refers to your machine tool. Uh, you can do a G71 or G72 type roughing or a G73, uh, which is more of an offset style roughing. I'm just gonna leave this unchecked for now. And then pass tolerance, maximum depth of cut. I'm going to leave this something, uh, I'll just leave it even at one millimeter. That's kind of light, but I want you guys to be able to see what it's, uh, uh, the multiple passes on the screen. I'm just going to hit, uh, let's hit OK and just use those settings. So you can see now Fusion gave us a tool path. And it's going past the back of the part, so that looks good. And Let's uh, simulate what we have now. So you remember what I said here, we uh, go to the operation, you right click. I wanna now simulate both. So I'll go to the setup and simulate my setup. So we'll hit play and see what we get. The facing operation. And then uh, here when you're simulating, We've got this button, white dot here. You can drag it to the right to go a little bit faster. Be careful though. If you go past that center mark right there, the tool path will go in reverse. And a few times I've had some customers calling me and say, hey, it's going the wrong direction. So be aware of that. Let that go there. <clears throat> and we're coming up on time. We got 11 minutes, man, time flies. Okay. So we've got the uh, facing and we rough the outside. Now we want to finish the uh, profile that we just cut here. And there's a few ways I can just come into here, turning, profile finishing. But what I like to use, uh, I've already got my constraints. You remember the front to back and radial constraints. So one way you can save yourself some time is if you go to, go to the operation that you want to, for example, like copy and use some of those same settings. So we call that derived operation. So you right click the operation and you come down here to where it says create derived operation. Go to turning and now we want to use the same settings from the roughing and apply a finishing strategy. And I did, did uh, fail to mention that we were leaving some stock behind and I'll, I'll, I'll go back to that really quick here uh, after this is done. So all I need to do is say, uh, derive this new operation from the previous operation, a finishing, and I'm just going to hit OK. And it gave me 
a toolpath. We've got this yellow warning. So when you see a yellow here, it's a warning or notification. If you see a red notification, or a red circle there, then that's a 911, it's an emergency, or it's something's uh, really bad gonna happen. Uh, so, but if it's a yellow, it's just a warning. So you can double click that and just to see what the warning is all about. And I'm paying attention to this bold part right here. It says the lead out has been modified due to a gouge with the remaining stock. So the lead out, remember I was talking about that is when the tool is entering or exiting the part. So what happened here is on the back, uh, Fusion automatically did some trimming or modifications. And how do I address that to get rid of that here under linking? There is this checkbox here, allow lead out. So allow the exit to cut the remaining stock. Now, when I turn that on, now watch what happens. That yellow notification goes away and it's using our exit strategy there. So that's all that was there. And then remember I said on the roughing, by default, it does leave material behind. And that's here, finish allowance. It's leaving 0.1 millimeters in the X axis and 0.1 millimeters in the Z axis. So it's leaving uh, some material all the way around the part there. Okay, so now we could simulate that, right click simulate. And I think I'm gonna jump quickly to some milling toolpaths because we're quickly running out of time. All right, so there's our finished uh, turning. And now what we need to do, we need to, I'm not gonna worry about drilling the center just cause we're running out of time here. I'm gonna mill these flats. So there's a few ways to do that on a lathe with live tooling. Hey Angelo. And, yeah. Um, everybody's yelling at you saying, don't worry about the time, just keep going. So so don't oh. worry about the time since we had to start a, a okay. little bit late. So keep, go, okay, keep going. Cool. So we, okay, cool, cool, good. That's good to hear. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, awesome. Okay. So let me mill these flats. So the beauty, beautiful thing I like about Fusion is when you're doing mill work on a lathe part, you're using the exact same strategies that you would on a mill part. So you don't have to learn anything new. The interface is the same. Let's see, I see Cobra frame building. Hey. Uh, if your mill turn only has C axis and no Y axis, is there anything special you need to do in CAM or is that all done in the post? It's all done in the post. Um, we're working on some UI things where you can tell it if you wanted to do a, a X and C or X and Y uh, with a checkbox, similar to how we have on the parting where you can have it uh, when you're doing a part, just hit a checkbox and they'll automatically pop up the parts catcher. So we're that kind of stuff is coming. Uh, all right, uh, let's see here. We wanna do a milling toolpath. So a couple ways we can, so if we have our cylindrical part and this is our tool, we can mill the flat this way or we can have our tool mill the flat this way. So if we imagine we have a flat here on the edge of this, we can mill a flat this way or we can mill a flat that way. So I'll show you both ways how to do that. Okay, so one way is uh, with the milling strategy, I would do a 2D contour. And let's select a tool. And I should have it in this uh, library. Oh, I still need to show you how to pull up the uh, new tool library. So I can filter by type here, flat end mill. Let's take this flat end mill and I'll just hit select. And then now I've got my tool selected. It knows the Z axis. So because we're in this orientation already for what I'm gonna cut, I'll go to the geometry tab and I'll say, and I'll just click that line right there. So as I zoom in, you can see that blue. And then we've also got this red arrow. The red arrow serves three purposes. It shows the direction the tool will be cutting. It shows the side of that blue line the tool will be on. And then also the distance from the blue line to the red arrow there, that's the radius of your tool. So if I look at it from the end here, so that means that our tool will be, uh, the circle will be in this area. So it gives you a great visual really quickly. So I can go and hit all of these 
you know, select all of these edges, but I'm just going to do one edge and I'll show and, and I'll show you why. So I'm just going to hit OK and see what Fusion gives me. So it used the default uh, settings for the linking, and that's again your tool, your entry and exit. And you can see it's doing this little swoop here, and then that straight line and that arc. There's some uh, settings that I can change to address that, and I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to right click and I'll hit edit. So one thing I like to do is uh, I can I can come here to tangential, tangential <laughs> tongue twister there tangential extension distance, and I can give a value. I can say, uh, give me, you know, 10 millimeters extension, so it extends it straight. Or I can uh, nerd out, I can right click, and I can say edit expression. I can come in here, I can say tool underscore, and as I start uh, typing in, uh, there's tool diameter uh, times 0.6. So it'll take 60% uh, of my tool diameter and apply that value there. So if I go and I change my tool, it'll automatically adjust that. We got stock contours we can also play with too. Uh, but what I wanted to show is on the linking is if you hover over this, there's that as a tool is approaching in Z, it has that entry arc. And I'm going to make that zero just to remove that. And then here we've got this here. Let me hover over. What is that? That's that straight line segment there. Uh, and then we've got this uh, lead in sweep angle. Let's make that zero. Let me hover over so you can see what that is. That's the sweep angle. So it was at 90. So you can see that image is showing the 90. And then uh, the horizontal lead in radius. Let's make that zero. Now let's see what happens when I hit OK. So now you can see it's plunging down and milling straight across. So let's simulate this now. Right click simulate and I'll hit play. And if I just go right, if I click the operation, it'll jump right to it. You could also hit that uh, arrow to go to the next operation. And then we've got these, you can see down in here, this first segment is the first facing. This is the profile roughing and then this different color here, that's the profile finishing. So I'm, I'm just gonna resume from there, let it finish that. And then now it'll mill our flat. So now as I rotate around, you can see Fusion machine that flat. So there's a few ways I can uh, finish that part. And what I like to use is a uh, what we call a uh, pattern. And you can do rectangular pattern, circular pattern, uh, different types of patterns. So I'm going to right click on this contour operation. And if I come down here, I can say uh, add to new pattern. And I'm going to click that. And here this box pops up. And I've got options here. If I click, we got linear pattern, circular pattern, mirror pattern, duplication, and component. What I'm going to do in this case is uh, same like I did in the design workspace. I'm going to use a circular pattern. And what's the axis of rotation on the pattern I'm creating? I want to rotate about the center of that. And how many instances? I want six. And you also can constrain it. You can say be, only go between 0 and 180, things like that. I see my name on there. Uh, let me hit OK. Let me read. Al has a finger up. Uh, do you have a question? Why did the tool orientation for the milling operation? Why did the tool orientation for the milling operation change? Okay. Uh, the tool orientation was still in line with my setup. So remember on our setup, our Z, our Z is in this orientation. Let me hold the part up like that. So here's my part and here's my Z orientation. The tool is in line with that. It simply moved over here to mill that flat. What we're going to do next, we are going to change the orientation so it's perpendicular. All right, so let's OK that on the setup to close that. And then now let's simulate the whole thing really quick here. And now we'll have all of those flats machined in. Uh, alternatively, what we can do 
in this pattern, or do I want to create a second pattern? Uh, let me just, let me do this. So let's do a milling and we're going to come into here. I've got the icon there. I like to go here so you guys can see it in case your uh, toolbar at the top looks different. We're going to do a 2D contour. And then I'm going to use that same tool. Fusion Remember is the last tool you used. And here under Geometry, remember where we select our contour? We've got this option here, Tool Orientation. And when this is blue here, that's asking for some user feedback. So I can say I want my tool normal to this face, or I could click a line and have the tool vector normal to that line that I select. So now, did you see that when I clicked that? So let me hit that there. So pay attention to the orientation there. If I come into here, you can see now it aligns my tool with that blue arrow. And then for geometry, what am I cutting? Remember I clicked that edge and now look, the arrow is now on this side and the tool will be on this side of the blue line and it's going to be cutting in that direction that the arrow is pointing. And I could have done a derived so that I can maintain all of those same settings. I'm going to do that. I'm going to show you how quickly it is to do that. So I'm going to expand this and I'm going to come into here and I'm going to say create derived operation, 2D milling, 2D contour, or I could have just done a copy paste or control D is another way. So there's more than one way. There's so many things you can do to make your life easy. Um, let's just do that. So come into here, duplicate it. So we've got this. So this one will be uh, 2D contour uh, axial. And this next one, let me drag this wider here. We're gonna do this one, uh, 2D contour radial. So it'll be radial orientation. Right click, whoops, uh, let me right click that and edit that operation. So remember we have that tool orientation here. I'm gonna say orient with that. It remembers the contour selection from the operation that I copied it from. And it also remembered uh, the tangential extension distance and all those link, you remember I came in here and I made that zero. I made the sweep angle and the radius zero. And now look what it does. Now the tool is in this orientation. So let me just simulate this one. And obviously it's just gonna, it's just gonna cut through all that. I'm going to, uh, let me suppress this. And now just suppress that axial one. Let me, Hi, uh, simulate the whole thing just so you can see what I'm what we're working with here so while that's going I'll take a quick look at the chat yeah, John Ning yep that's correct we just changed orientation now you can see the tool is milling those flats so you have the option based on your machine uh, capabilities uh, to machine a part like this. Okay, I'll still confuse about the tool orientation. Uh, okay, so let me unsuppress this and then I'll regenerate that. So the tool orientation simply uh, controls the orientation of the tool. Is the tool in this orientation or let me you would be seeing it this way. Is the tool orientation this way along Z? Or in this case, do we want the tool orientation along X? So you control the orientation of your tool. Peter says, cannot wait until the point Angela Juris is confirmed. Okay, today's set up at Pier 9. Yeah, I'd be happy to machine this at Pier 9. Okay, cool. Yeah, and Angelo, people are geeking yeah. out about you showing that comparison preview. Oh, the, the, the fact the that comparison. it shows what's been machined and what's left. And, you know, I, honestly, I even admitted on the chat that I used a different one until you showed me this. And I'm like, well, that totally makes sense. It's such a oh, cool yeah. preview. Yeah, before that, uh, I used to use Material. Yeah, that's what I used. 
And then you can still kind of see, you know, there's still a hole there and there's still this area needs to be removed. But man, it's it's so much better when you see it like this. You can see, oh, okay, I still need to put those holes and then the center bore. And uh, yeah, it's it makes my life a lot easier. Uh, okay, so any questions thus far that I haven't answered? We can add this, uh, the bolt circle in there. Yeah, I'd say keep going forward. Uh, cool, cool. We'll go like another 10 minutes or so. Just I know people have things to get to. And we did start a little bit late. Uh, but and this is working out good, Brad. I'm glad you suggested Zoom, man. And then you can also chime in instead of sending me a message. So this is this is good. Oh, hey, Mark. What's up, Mark? How you doing down there? And Daniel, thumbs up. And there's a, someone, is that Russian? Where that says, oops, hi. Okay, Ayal says, to be more specific, does using two orientations require this ability in the machine? Uh, yes, you're, obviously your machine needs to be able to do that. And um, some machines, now I'm gonna uh, talk about this. So if you have a tool that is, um, uh, if you have a machine that does not have a Y axis, then to machine these flats, you would have to use this orientation. The tool can move along X. So therefore, if I'm looking at it like, uh, you know, um, is that the right orientation? So the tool here can move along the X axis and then the C is the, the cylindrical axis. So X, Y, Z, and then you have A, B, C. So if you ever aren't sure what axis rotates about what, just remember X, Y, Z, and then A, B, C. So uh, A rotates around X, uh, B rotates around Y, and C rotates around Z, like zebra or Z. So we've got our Z here, and then C would be revolving around that blue line. So if you have a machine that does not have a y-axis, you'd want to cut these flats with the tool in the axial orientation. If you want to use the radial orientation like this, then you would need a machine that has a y-axis so that when you're looking at it on the end here, that the tool, so our, our X would be kind of going in this direction and then Y would be perpendicular to X. Disregard this green line there. That's just because the way I have my orientation, uh, tool orientation set up on the geometry tab. But so X would be coming this way and then Y would come in, be coming that way so that you can hit with the flat face of that end mill. It can mill across in Y. Uh, if you were to try and do that with an uh, X and a C, then the front leading edge of your tool, it just would create a, a, a it just wouldn't work, <laughs> wouldn't work. Uh, so a uh, couple of things to talk about and think about. Um, based on your machine configuration, do you have a Y axis, things like that. And then the breadboard says, is there going to be a version of this using multi axis for mill only? Yes, I've got some ideas for a future live stream to do some uh, fourth axis stuff and some simultaneous five axis stuff. Okay, A hey, all thumbs up. In the machine that I hope to build, I will have X, Y, Z, and A eventually. A CNC mill with an extra fourth axis around X. Cool, yeah, that'll be good. I uh, can definitely help you with that when you're ready. Okay, so now let's uh, drill, do these four holes. And my mouse is, okay, there my mouse is working now. Okay. Uh, let's go and come into here under drilling and let's select the tool. And what do I have in this turning library? Uh, let's see, I want a spot drill. In a spot drill, there's a preview of it. And the cool thing about fusion is, so I can pick the center of that bore, but under the geometry, I don't even need to be on that page on that tab actually. I can just be on the tool tab, but I'm coming here. Under the whole face, see, generally when you're doing a through hole, you'd pick the cylinder, the inside cylinder of that, but 
check this out. I can just pick that cone and Infusion will give me a preview of my tool and it knows the depth and it'll go to the depth of that uh, chamfer that's been created. And the reason why I do that and select it that way, and it looks like my tool is a little large, it's gonna violate the model. I'll go in and I'll change that. But let me just show you when I hit okay, what, what, uh, what it looks like. So you can see the tool is too big. Let me just come into here under, oh, remember uh, I had commented about uh, the tool library. So go in the top, let me cancel out. Top right, go to preferences. And then here under preview, uh, we've got some things down here. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Where is it? Tool library right here. It's the new tool library. Make sure that you check that and then you'll see the new uh, user interface. Uh, this is where we preview features, things that are still being tested, but not officially released yet. So you can do that and turn that on. Let's change the diameter of that tool. I'll just come into here and in the untitled document that I have yet, I didn't save it yet. I'll come into here and I'll edit that tool diameter. And uh, that thing is 10 millimeter. Let's change it to eight. Now I've got a smaller diameter. And now uh, Fusion says this uh, speed, the speeds and feeds of this are being used in the drill one operation. You want to update it? I'll just say yes. I'll hit it uh, close here. And then now we've got that red because something has changed. I'll simply regenerate that. Ah, and I'm still too big. <laughs> okay, let's come into here. Untitled document. I'll edit that. And let's make it six. Six millimeters. And six. That's right, because my hole was four and I think my chamfer was five, so that should work. And I'll close that. Okay, so now our tool won't hit. Uh, here under the where I selected that face, I can go and I can select each cone face there. What I like to do is just say select same diameter. Fusion will find them all and hit OK. And the cool thing about that is if I go in the model and I change it from four holes to say eight holes or 10 holes, it'll, it, if I had that checkbox turned on, it'll automatically uh, find it. Let's drill that through hole now. And let me just confirm. Uh, so when I click on that circle there in the bottom right hand corner, it says radius two millimeters. That's how I know that hole's uh, four millimeters. So let's go ahead and drill. And let's uh, select a tool. And I'll come into my turning. I should have it in here. As it's loading, uh, where's my drill? 20 millimeter. Here's a four millimeter drill right there. I will select that tool. I could have done a derived operation. I could have copied it. I'm just going to show you how easy it is. Now I say, what hole face am I drilling? That. And what Fusion does, it automatically determined the cylinder there in blue. I want it to come to the top face. A few ways to do that. You can control that. You can say the bottom height. Uh, sorry, the top height here. See where it says whole top? That's that edge right there. I can do something like this, a selection, and say go to that face. And then now when I'm looking at it, you see the blue preview goes to there. I want the tool to break through. So now I can say I want to go to the bottom of the hole. Also consider the drill tip to go through the bottom. And you see when I check that, see how the preview shows you here? It's going to the, uh, the, the edge of the tool there is going to the bottom of the hole. But I want to now go break through by a certain amount, let's say two millimeters. Cycle, if you want to just do a standard drill, feed in, wrap it out, G81 type would be drilling, wrap it out. If you wanted to do some chip breaking, you can do that or deep hole. I'll just leave it as that and hit OK. And then uh, what did I forget here, guys? 
Someone put it in the chat. What do I got to do to hit all those holes? Make sure you guys are paying attention. There's a little bit of a delay from when I talk till uh, you guys see it. Anyway, what I forgot to do is say, someone <laughs> select same diameter and it automatically finds them all for me. And I realized I made a slight mistake. Yeah, good job. Yeah, Daniel's got it, select same hole. Uh, here on that chamfer, I like to use a drill with a dwell which is a G82, and I wanna pause. I've talked about this in previous live streams. When you're drilling a hole and the tool is going to the depth, it's gonna feed down and then wrap it out. When you're doing a, uh, imagine you're on a drill press or on a bridge port mill and you're drilling and you're countersinking a hole, do you ever just come down and then come down and quickly go up? Or do you come down and pause there for a mo moment to let the tool spin? A little bit to get a nice smooth finish on that chamfer or counterbore. Yeah, so that's why I selected here counterboring it with a dwell. That means when it reaches the bottom of the hole to pause for a moment. And I'm telling it to pause 0.3 seconds. So that looks good now. Let's uh, pop this center hole in here. And I'm going to pick drilling. And uh, that hole was 30 millimeters. Uh, let's see, I can, uh, oops, come to my, I'm having issues with my mouse again, a slight delay. Let's see, I've got a 20 millimeter drill here. Haas tip of the day. <laughs> yeah, Haas does good stuff with their tip of the day. Mark Terrybear is a good dude. Okay. Hey, that looks uh, kind of big. So that says 20 millimeter drill, but my hole was uh, 15 millimeters. Uh, let me see, will it let me, come on, loading, where's my tool, uh, where's my drill, there it is. Can I edit that tool to a diameter of 15? Let's call that 15 and 15. Okay. I suppose we can even bore it too, but boring, that's easy. Uh, okay. Now again, I'll do the whole face here. And remember how you're able to go beyond the backside. That's controlled on the heights tab. Drill tip through, break through by, say, two millimeters. One very important thing. In fusion, uh, you need to, uh, so if you have a, uh, a static tool where the drill is not spinning because the part is turning, you need to come into the uh, tool library that uh, has that tool and you edit that here. And under post-processor, you need to make sure this is unchecked. It's not a live tool, that it's a static tool, so it's not spinning. So the spin, the part spinning is going to control the um, control that. If you have live tool checked, then on a Haas machine, it would give the M133 with the P for the RPM. And uh, then you're, uh, I get that a lot. People say, hey, how do I control that? Just uncheck that live tool. I'll accept that. Close that. And finally, uh, remember I talked about, I can part off and all that. I talked about letting the cutting tool uh, chamfer the part. So let's do that. So we've got here under the milling strategies, we've got 2D chamfer. I'm gonna pick a tool and I'm gonna go to this library and I should have a chamfer mill in there. And here it is, yeah. Uh, there's a preview of my tool, I will select that. And under geometry, what am I cutting? I'll just click this and I don't need to change the orientation because my setup Z definition is already set correctly. Under passes, this is where you've got a few settings here. So how wide do you want that chamfer to be? And I use this strategy if there's not a modeled chamfer on my part. So let's give it, uh, let's do one millimeter on purpose. And then 
how this chamfer tip offset is how deep that tool is going. So it's, uh, it's important. So this is a, uh, I have a pen here with an angle there. It's basically when, how deep your tool is going and the depth of your tool will control how it is controlled radially as well. So if you have a shoulder that you need your tool to stay away from, you wanna go deeper so that the, the wall, the shank of the tool goes away from the wall so you don't have a collision. But in this case, I really don't have that. Uh, so it doesn't really matter, but uh, I will just do something like say three millimeters there. I'm just gonna hit okay, see what Fusion gives me. So you can see uh, there's something there. Let me simulate that. And I don't see any lead in and lead out. Where's my linking? Let's give it uh, something here. Let's give it uh, three millimeters. And I don't want a vertical lead in radius. And whoa, that was too big of a setting. Uh, where's my linking here? Let's change that to, uh, let's say one. Uh, no linear lead-in distance. Uh, do I even need that? Nah. Uh, perpendicular was checked. I don't know why. Maybe some of my defaults are set. Okay. That looks good. Let's uh, simulate the whole part. So this is how I'd be sitting in the machine like that. How are we doing on time? Oh yeah, so AL says, what will it show on the chamfer? So you'll see it now. So let me hide the model. Uh, hide the body. So when you're doing comparison and you're violating the model like we just did here, it'll show it in red. So that's what we see. But in this case, I do want that chamfer. I want that modeled chamfer. All right, how are we doing? Yeah, P, yeah, AL says that's what you expected. Yeah, so I could part this off. Um, parting is super easy in Fusion. You go to turning. We got this turning part. You come to here, part, select a tool. And what that does, it's going to cut off the part. Let me come into here under turning. And where's my parting tool? Uh, can I use that tool? That's nice and long. Uh, let's just go here. And Fusion, look, it already gave me a tool path because when you say when you select the parting operation, it's already uh, understands uh, what, what your intent is, what you want to do, and uh, what it's doing is machining off the back. And if I wanted to take it to size, uh, Peter says, go on. <laughs> uh, if I want to take this to size, which I generally don't do because part off tools don't leave the best surface finish, I would give an offset here, um, something like one millimeter. But remember, you see how that brown line, it went in the positive, Z positive direction. I want to make sure that's a minus one millimeter. So then it'll part off the part right there. Um, and it's just call it for now because of uh, time. We're way over, we're 24 minutes over the end of the hour. And what I can do is maybe on the next one, uh, oh, I just thought of something. One quick thing here, we've got this on the part off tool edge break. Uh, you could, uh, selection, I can say, come off my selection and then now whatever modeled chamfer is there, fusion, obviously I wanna come a little bit. See how those lines, it's starting way up here. I wanna change this to model OD. And then this is gonna say outer radius. And this can say retract. And I don't need a 10 millimeter offset. I can bring that closer there. So now what Fusion will do, that might be a little too close. But anyway, let's see what we get here. Simulate. And there's our tool paths. And parting off the part. So that's a, 
That's it. Don't forget to hit thumbs up before you leave. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys like this, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, be honest, give us a thumbs down. Please uh, drop your comments in the comment section, not in the live chat. Um, Brad, is there something I missed? Obviously, I would then do a secondary operation and face that. And no, but I mean, everybody from, from the chat looks like everybody was really interested in this. So I think they're just, you know, chomping at the bit to see more stuff like this. Um, cool. Like Angelo said, if you have any questions, throw them out into the YouTube comments. And um, we go through and we look at those and stuff like that. So if your question didn't get answered, throw it out there. And then Angelo, if you yeah. don't mind bringing up the, the live stream page and oh, yeah, 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 yeah. what's coming up. Sure. Let me grab that. And then uh, what, what we can do maybe on another one, I can maybe do some threading, do some boring, and show you my strategies and how I approach those types of uh, tool paths. Yeah, I saw a question, Angelo, about doing like an internal chamfer. So Yeah, okay. I think, yeah, yeah, I can do that on the next live stream. How about that? Okay, so let me come to... Uh, Fusion 360 Live, and let me drag that into this window here. Oops, I need to minimize. Let me close this. Let me come into here. Come on. All right, why am I not able to minimize this guy? There we go. It's been one of those days. Okay, so here, hey, that's what we're watching now. And then... Uh, Where's the uh, upcoming live streams? There yeah. it is right here. Yeah. And then uh, I am actually going to be on again on Monday with uh, my buddy, uh, the Mr. Dupuy. I don't have a cool beard like him, though. No. <laughs> uh, and then uh, next Thursday, Brad is going to be live with Kevin Kennedy. So that's going to be a good one that you definitely don't want to miss. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. We love the community. Uh, we'll answer all the questions. Don't forget again, uh, hit us, you know, if you like it, like what you see, tell us. Um, yeah. Anything else, Brad? Are we good for now? I think you did an awesome job. Um, I always learn watching you. You always learn watching me. This is, I think the community yeah. is just eating this stuff up. So again, everybody, thank you for the little bit of technical difficulties at the beginning, <laughs> but we made it happen. And Angelo, you're awesome. Uh, we're we're going to do more of these, guys, so keep your eye out. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Uh, we try and, and put these out there um, as often as we can, and hopefully everybody is staying safe and have yeah. fun fusioning. Yeah, one quick tip. If you guys uh, need anything, yeah, like Brad said, leave a comment. You can also hit me up on Instagram, the True Croatian Sensation. Uh, I answer questions there as well. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks, guys, for being here. Brad, thank you for being on the keyboards and uh, helping with uh, that technical difficulty. And I really look forward to your live stream next week, Brad, with uh, Mr. Kevin Kennedy. It'll awesome. be good. Yeah, Everybody else? Guys. Yeah, take care. See you guys. Bye.